What I want to talk about is solitude. Most people don't realize an essential truth, or if they do, they avoid it. That truth is that God is not found in other people or with other people. God is found and a relationship with him is formed in solitude. St. Alphonsus said, quote, Whosoever loves God loves solitude. There the Lord communicates himself more familiarly to souls, because there he finds them less entangled in worldly affairs and more detached from earthly affections. St. Eucarius relates that a certain man, desirous of becoming a saint, asked a servant of God where he should find God. The servant conducted him to a solitary place and said, Behold where God is found. End quote. I want to focus on two aspects of this truth and how it is relevant for us today. The first concerns building a relationship with God, and the second involves believing God's truth without compromise and in the way he wants it to be believed and communicated. Regarding building a true relationship with God and an interior relationship with God, if one doesn't get away from others, one will never receive the graces to know or fulfill God's will and one will never get to know God. The reason that so few learn and fulfill God's will, and equally few believe his truth without compromise, but instead remain steeped in sin or involved in heresy, is because they are always around others. By always being around others, whether in person or virtually through the internet, they become contaminated by what others think and do. They are tainted by the liberalism, the sinful inclinations, the human respect, the desires to thwart or modify God's will, which are present in others who haven't ever found God in solitude. While being slightly tainted by their influence, and this corruption can often be subtle, they also fail to build a true relationship with God away from others. As St. Alphonsus said, quote, The atmosphere of the world is noxious and pestilential. Whosoever breathes it easily catches spiritual infection. Human respect, bad example, and evil conversations are powerful incitements to earthly attachments and to estrangement of the soul from God. Everyone knows that the damnation of numberless souls is attributable to the occasions of sin so common in the world. End quote. As an example, people who spend significant time each day on an internet forum or in a chat room or on Facebook or on YouTube not to look at a video which might be of value, but rather to constantly check in to see who's commenting. This is where countless graces are lost and souls are lost. They are not finding God. They are often being tainted by others who themselves haven't found God. They are wasting time, and they are often committing sin. They are being slightly polluted or affected in their outlook by those who haven't found God in solitude or who are often liberal or heretical or unbelieving. They would be much better served if they stopped doing this. They would then begin to see things as they are and as God wants them to see it, rather than seeing them through the corrupted prism of the people around them. The saints understood the corrupting influence of other people, even in ages which were veritable ages of faith compared to our day. In Our Lady of Fatima by William Thomas Walsh we read that, quote, one afternoon Lucia brought some other girls, schoolmates. When they had left, Francisco looked seriously at her and said, Don't walk with them, because you can learn to commit sins. But they leave school when I do, Lucia replied. When you leave, Francisco said, spend a little while at the feet of the hidden Jesus and then come home alone. End quote. With true wisdom, Francisco saw that Lucia could have been corrupted by those individuals and that it was not productive to walk home with them. Even if you are in a large family, you need to find time where you can separate yourself from your family members and be alone. There is no other way to build a relationship with God. You need to go somewhere, whether it's your room or outside or somewhere else. You need to have time by yourself to pray in solitude and forge that relationship with God through prayer and reading. In the history of Fatima, we also read about Francisco and how his love of solitude grew along with the graces he was receiving after Our Lady's appearance at Fatima. Quote, Another characteristic of the saints that Francisco began to manifest after the apparition of Our Lady 
was the love of solitude. One May morning he left the two girls, Jacinta and Lucia, with the sheep and climbed to the top of a high rock. You can't come up here, he called down. Leave me alone. End quote. The hard truth, the big problem we have today, is that almost everyone is wicked or heretical. And one of the reasons that so many people wrongly perceive what we say as hard or severe or wrong is because they measure things by and are corrupted by what others think, rather than having assessed them honestly without any regard for the opinions of others and only with a consideration of the reality and what God himself thinks. If they got away from others, they would see things as they are, or they would have a much better chance of doing so. This problem in our day is compounded by the Internet, where people can remain essentially around or hang out with others all the time. Many waste much of their day in chat rooms or on forums or on blogs of little value. It is in these places that sinful, heretical, and evil people abound, people who haven't ever found God in solitude, and corrupt others by their wickedness or their liberalism or their heresies. These can often be subtle, and this is why it's so dangerous. They waste people's time, they confuse them, they distract from their peace, and they keep them from finding God or doing something more productive. And it's no surprise that these forums and chat rooms and YouTube commenting and Facebook commenting are so corrupting because evil people flock there. People who need to be constantly around others and pacified by others and in companionship with others because they shun God in solitude. That is not to say that everyone who has ever commented is evil but the supermajority of those who flock to these places are evil. As St. Alphonsus said, quote, Worldlings shun solitude, and with good reason, for in solitude they feel more acutely the remorse of conscience, and therefore they go in search of the conversations and tumults of the world, that the noise of these occupations may stifle the stings of remorse, end quote. St. Alphonsus was so aware of the potential corrupting influence of others that he emphasized with special vigor the detachment from even relatives. He says in The True Spouse of Jesus Christ, quote, If attachment to relatives were not productive of great mischief, Jesus Christ would not have so strenuously exhorted us to estrangement from them. A man's enemy shall be they of his own household, Matthew 10:36. Relatives are very often the worst enemies of the sanctification of Christians. End quote. The saints emphasize that God cannot use and God cannot be pleased with those who try to serve him with regard for what others think. As St. Alphonsus said, quoting St. Francis Borgia, quote, He who desires to consecrate himself to God must in the first place trample under his feet all regard for what others will say of him. End quote. This is true not only in regard to what others will say of him, but in regard to what others will say about matters on which God has revealed things, by always being around other people and corrupted by their ideas and their influence. Countless people are failing to discover God's will, they are failing to please him, and they are losing their souls.